Hey, I'm Ryan Bauer Walsh, and I'm producing and composing the Rainbow Lullaby with Broadway Records. Uh, the Rainbow Lullaby is the world's first LGBTQ lullaby album for queer families and queer parents. Um, we created this album out of sort of a, a really sad place, but uh, it's gone into a really beautiful one, actually. Uh, this album is jam-packed full of amazing people. It's got Mark Shaman on it. Uh, there's Jen Colella, Tony Award winning Lauren Patton is on the album. Jelani Remy, it's amazing. Uh, Andrew Gerla, it's uh, an entirely queer composition team. And then everybody who's one of the performers on it is LGBTQ, LGBTQ or uh, adjacent. <laughs> Marissa Rosen is our honorary gay. So there's actually 50 people who helped create this album with me. Uh, I conceived the idea with my friend Fred Souter, who uh, wrote and composed Bedbugs off Broadway. And it started just as this project uh, during quarantine. Everybody was kind of in this creative cocoon for the longest time. And out of it, we were able to pull in not just Fred and I, but uh, over 20 composers total, I think, at this point. Uh, including Susie Mosher, Mark Shaman, Adam Overit, Andrew Gerla. Uh, it's an amazing team of composers, actually, and they span the entire compendium within the LGBT community. Uh, well, first, when it happened with my friend Fred, uh, this had come out of a, a lot of grief, actually. Um, I don't know if we've talked about this, but my mother, during the pandemic, she was fighting cancer. And I went home to take care of her. And also as an actor, there was no work for me to be doing in New York City. So I went home to take care of her in June of last year. Um, I was working as a painter. Uh, that's where my primary income was during most of the pandemic and for the last few years. And my friends bought everything I'd ever painted so that I could afford to go home. And, and I took the next uh, four months having the privilege of taking care of my mother who passed in October. And uh, after she passed away, I was left in this place of kind of dissociative reality. I, my gravity had disappeared. My mother's energy was something I was fighting to kind of keep. And, you know, after you lose a parent, there's just this moment of childhood archaeology that happens in your childhood home where you are surrounded by all these memories. And there's really no way to use memories to rebuild a person. And so what I wanted to do was create a project that helped that maternal energy from my mother live again and kind of move forward and be something other people could experience in the way that I was so blessed to have it. And that's that's where this uh, album came from actually, uh, was thinking of the sweetest kind of hug that I could no longer get from my mother and a way to give that to others. And so with LGBTQ lullabies, I, I couldn't believe that there was no such thing. And you have to realize that there was a an entire generation of role models that the HIV crisis took away from us. I didn't grow up with gay role models and I didn't grow up with queer traditions or, or gay families around me. And so I feel like it's my time uh, and my generation's time to really start to contribute to queer family traditions and queer family music traditions, because I think that artist activism is kind of the strongest thing you can do. Uh, I believe that creating will always be stronger than destruction and entropy. It's, it's something that I think destruction can never compete with. So that's where we kind of created this album from. And when I approached the uh, artists to work with them on this album, that's when I decided, well, I need to share this story completely and wholly so they understand that this is coming from a place of absolute love. And my number one rule <laughs> when actually working with artists was you have to be one of the nicest people I've ever met. <laughs> and everybody on this album is just really incredible. This is actually, uh, it's such a mess in my art studio right now. I'm so sorry. Um, this is the cover to the Rainbow Lullaby album that I painted for it. Um, I wanted, uh, it's actually incorporating several of the songs and this is actually my childhood home down here. Um, it's a replica of the little place I grew up in. And then it's a rainbow lullaby leading through night into the dawn. So, and I thought that was a nice metaphor. I grew up in Plymouth, Minnesota, like a small town halfway to Corn, just outside Minneapolis. Uh, worked as an actor at the age of uh, 15. Thought I'd become an architect. And instead I, I do all these things instead, paint and compose and write and act. 
I first came to New York right out of school. Actually, I moved to New York two weeks before graduation in 2006. Uh, I got a loft with two friends in Brooklyn for $350 per bedroom back when you could do that, <laughs> which now uh, the McKibben lofts, I think, are like three or four grand a month. So, uh, but I've moved around a lot. I lived in Inwood and now I live in Harlem, uh, where I just uh, bought my first home on 145th Street. So this is, this is why it's a mess is because I'm still figuring out how to use my space. Uh, I have a sound booth that you can't see over here that I just built with my friend, uh, John Stymack, uh, who's wonderful. Uh, he works at the Met. And then uh, I do a lot of painting in here. The light is amazing, which is the reason I really wanted this apartment. Um, but it's, it's been such a, such a blessing to have room to create. I've always wanted just like a space that was completely dedicated to making. And now I, I have one and I'm trying to make the most of it. So when we first had the idea for the album, we were just kind of imagining singing to our own children that we might someday have, Fred and I, um, not together, but as, as people in general. And I had written some songs 14 years ago that I've always thought were beautiful, but you know, they were like love songs to somebody. And now they're lullabies to children that I might someday have. Um, and from there, as we asked more people, we did try to build on the idea of a few things. We wanted to make sure that we helped uh, create representation within our community so that everybody had a voice in the album um, from all, all parts of it. And the way I was able to kind of incorporate these into one album was by writing a strong thesis statement with the title song of the album, The Rainbow Lullaby. And the whole idea behind The Rainbow Lullaby as a title song is that um, we can only get to tomorrow if all of us go together. And it's, it's about having uh, the rainbow be a metaphor for everyone uh, and the inclusivity that it takes to get to equality. And turning that into a lullaby is kind of a sweet form of activism that I don't think anybody's gonna take issue with. I'm always surprised, <laughs> but I think it's, um, when it's literally about including everyone, I would hope no one feels left out. So that's, that's the way that we've kind of done it. And then it kind of winds its way across this great valley, um, which is the, the first lyric of the album, um, through all of these intersections of kind of queer culture. And then Mark Shaman has the final song and he kind of wraps it all together with the statement that a family is made of who gives you love. And that's truly what creates family is love. And that's been something I've always, sort of cherished, especially in a community where so many of us depend on chosen family um, because of, you know, the kind of generational trauma that's been inflicted on so many of us because of different ideas about what's acceptable societally. Um, I think that it's been really wonderful to kind of build that idea that family is literally something that most of us had to decide um, because we weren't given the opportunity to just have one. So. That, that's where I find myself kind of creating that arch is uh, between wanting to be part of society and culture and that opportunity to create family and then telling you that the way you do it is by loving each other. Mark Shaman is such a hero of mine for so many reasons, but primarily because he's been such a good representative for the queer community. He's, he's joy. He creates these wonderful stories that um, sing so honestly about what it is to be accepted and to, to kind of find out who you are and why it's exciting to be yourself. And so I had done the cover art for Andrew Gerla's album he had done with Broadway Records um, called Artists in Re Residence. Um, and it, the cover was all these performers on their fire escapes singing into the night. And Mark Shaman had done an, a song with him and he was able to connect us together. And when I pitched him uh, the album idea that it would be the first of its kind, uh, his only question was, do you mind if I use a full orchestration? Because <laughs> we were only gonna use like piano and cello and glock on most of the songs. And I was not about to say no. And so immediately uh, his entire song has an entire orchestra with it, which is beautiful. Uh, so the opening is going to be fully orchestrated and the closing will be fully orchestrated. But the rest of it sort of winds together with like Glock, um, piano and cello played by Jacob Yates. We finally picked the day of release. Originally, we were like, we'll have this out by June. 
my learning curve as a producer was broad <laughs> and I have been so grateful for the patience of all the artists I've been working with, but um, we actually decided that it will be the one year anniversary of my mother's passing on October 28th uh, when we'll release the album to the public. Um, and that's so special to me. <sighs> hmm. Uh, and there's my cat. Um, because I wanted to have something to celebrate um, and not to just grieve on that day. And I have so many reasons to celebrate now. And I'm, I'm really grateful for that because I was so scared of it <laughs> for so long because loss is this thing you feel so deeply. And when you can create something to celebrate the existence of someone's life and not keep imagining what could have been, it helps them live in a more profound way after they've passed. And I, I think that this release date is going to help me. And a lot of people kind of come to terms with loss in a way that's also gonna bring us closer together. Empathy in the time of pandemic has been so incredibly embracing. I've never seen such an outpouring of love from so many people and uh, with with this kind of release date I think that it kind of encompasses what it means to love someone um, it is important to me that it is that date but uh, this is actually uh, part of my fashion line that I just released with Tin Pin um, through my friend Scott Tracy who started that it's called Banana Duck and it's a throwback line that's uh, a children's genderless clothing line which this is actually the samples for the adult line coming out this holidays and I really wanted it to kind of feel like Lisa Frank meets Jean de Brunhoff meets like uh, 1930s illustrators as a way to kind of uh, get away from graphic design and clean lines and also gender expectations for children. I think that they should be allowed to just kind of wear whatever they want. So the entire thing is sensory friendly in case you need clothes that are a little tighter for a little bit of a hug or a little looser if you need some room to move. So it's been a really fun experience. That was also part of my creative cocoon living in the basement in Minnesota was getting a chance to just paint and create something I'd always wanted to but never had time or the opportunity to. So really hoping that like it can become a thing because I, I don't see why adult fashion has to be so terribly serious. <laughs> so this is the whole outfit, the shoes.